Welcome back. And the so-called comeback kid comes back to the campaign trail. We have some live pictures right now. This is in Georgia, where former President Bill Clinton is about to speak to voters. This is in Columbus, Georgia. He's there to campaign for the vice president. And it is his second day in the Peach State before he will head to another state that's up for grabs, North Carolina. Democrats are hoping Clinton can appeal to those southern rural voters. And joining us now, NBC News White House correspondent Monica Alba and Democratic strategist and former advisor to Bill and Hillary Clinton, Richard Goodstein. So, Monica, Bill Clinton speaking this hour. We're awaiting his arrival there in Columbus. What can we expect from him? Well, where he's campaigning tells you a lot about what the Harris campaign is thinking here, Anna. And they're deploying former President Clinton to super rural areas, as you just identified, in Georgia and later in North Carolina, because they want him to go to places where Harris surrogates really haven't stepped foot, let alone a former president, to deliver an economic message, to doubt the vice, to tout the vice president's record, and to do that in a way that they believe only someone like Bill Clinton can do, which is to have these intimate events. Yesterday he was at a church service. Then he was at a fish fry talking essentially about what he views as this race boiling down to, again, in a way that from his own history and experience only he can really speak to as somebody who years ago was brought in as the explainer in chief to try to help former President Obama when he was up for re-election, specifically on the economy post-recession. They're trying to replicate a little bit of that. And here's a little more of what the former president had to say in Georgia yesterday. This whole election and the future of the country is turning out to be what people who were sort of on the fence about voting are going to do in the next three and a half weeks. It's the greatest thing I've ever seen. You might not think it's bad, but I mean, if you're one of them, don't feel guilty or anything, but the whole future of the country is on your back. <laughs> Now I'm told he was very eager to do this, that he will be out there campaigning beyond the events that I just mentioned and hitting all of the battleground states before Election Day is here. But again, he's going to be having a bit of a different strategy than what we saw former President Obama do, which is to go to big cities, to those centers and hold large rallies. So they're trying to have this contrasting approach with the two former presidents. And he's going to be doing that in these areas where they really think if they can drive up the margin even just a little bit beyond the major cities, beyond a big Atlanta, for instance, in Georgia there where he was, that that could make all the difference. So they're leaning in as much as they can to that. And then I'm told in about a week or so, you're going to start to see former Secretary of State and former Democratic nominee Hillary Clinton out campaigning again, rounding out that list of the top Democratic high-profile surrogates. Yeah, we're just about it. three weeks away now from the election day. Thank you so much, Monica Alba, for all that reporting. Richard, Harris campaign spokesman Ian Sams sort of teased this Clinton campaign swing, posting this, the Harris campaign unleashes the big dog. Talk to us about what you think Clinton brings to the Harris campaign. Well, a few things. First, the contrast between every substantial Democrat, Obama, Clinton, Hillary Clinton, you name it, is out there uh, for uh, Kamala Harris for square, as opposed to every leading Republican, Bush, Romney, um, Pence, none of whom, you know, said that, you know, that uh, Trump should be in the White House, and people like Dick and Liz Cheney, who affirmatively are supporting Kamala Harris. So there's a big contrast there. If you're sitting back there as a swing voter, you think, what do these people, his, Trump's former chief of staff, know that I don't know if they're saying he's unfit? That's one. Two. Bill Clinton does have a unique ability to speak to these rural, blue-collar voters, not just in North and South, in North Carolina and Georgia, but again, he'll go into the what they call kind of the T of Pennsylvania, the kind of the again middle America, the midwestern part of Pennsylvania, and Michigan and Wisconsin, and speak to these people in a way that, frankly, a lot of Democrats uh, haven't been able to kind of figure out how to do. And I would say that. I mean, right now it's on the eve of early voting starting in North Carolina and Georgia, and there's some evidence that all this is working. Trump's right. just going for the bros, whereas the Harris campaign is reaching out to non-traditional voters, and we're seeing from the early vote they're way outperforming what they did in 2020. So I think yeah. the, the signs are good. I see what the you know what Steve said about the polls, but in terms of the early vote, 
the signs are actually quite good for Democrats. When you talk about where he's going, targeting those more rural voters, some of the blue collar voters in those communities, I'm wondering what you see as the key message Bill Clinton and only Bill Clinton can deliver to connect with some of those voters. So Bill Clinton, when he was president, presided over an economy the likes of which Donald Trump could only dream about. I mean, in terms of uh, GDP growth and job creation, as we know, Trump was the first president in 100 years to leave office with fewer people working than when he started. And I think Bill Clinton can speak about the economy. Yes, inflation's on people's mind, but he can kind of talk about it. There was a reason he was explainer in chief, because he could talk about these issues in a way that connects with people who otherwise feel like Democrats are a bunch of elites. And I think Clinton has a way of communicating with them. And he demonstrated himself when he was on the ballot. And he's demonstrated by going out um, campaigning for others since then. You know, we've we've seen the Trump campaign has had some strength when it comes to young men voters in particular. We heard former President Obama addressed that as well last week, specifically talking to uh, young black men voters. But, you know, while both Clinton and Obama have a lot of popularity with the Democratic base, I can't help but just wonder, you know, are they able to have the same kind of appeal to new voters, people who are of the younger generations who were either too young to vote or some of them maybe not even born when these two former presidents were in office? Yeah, I mean, it stands to reason that um, most young voters weren't alive when Bill Clinton was president, obviously, by definition. Um, but what he can do is speak to people um, in ways that, again, Democrats have struggled to do to put where we are in the economy in context. As we know, um, the Wall Street Journal called the U.S. economy the envy of the world. Um, we know that if you look at, by all indicators, this economy is doing quite well. People don't feel it. And I think Bill Clinton has a way of communicating, however old you are, with these people about what exactly is going on and to keep in perspective what the stakes are. Um, and I think in that regard, um, you know, people who regretted uh, voting for Trump in 2016, maybe came around in 2020, are kind of reminded why they did that and why they need to keep that trend going forward.